we have stramonium when we have some type of uh, aggression. Aggression. Um, it is uh, very seldom uh, that uh, um, stramonium will be indicated where there is no aggression, there is no violence. And when I say violence, I mean in the appearance of the symptoms as well. Eh? So ceremonium is a remedy which can express that which is inside, which is on the subconscious, and can express it in a violent manner, in a violent way. We realize that these persons, they have kept inside them a lot of darkness, a lot of dark element, what we say, the dark element. It's a heavy darkness. And it is uh, uh, indicative that they cannot stand external darkness. If you have a stramonium and you sleep in a dormitory and you switch off the light in the night, even if he is asleep, he will wake up in a terror and will jump to open the lights. It's so much the fear of darkness which, um, which indicates, indicates the condition in which the person is living. Eh? Yet, in spite of this description which I make, you may imagine somebody who comes in front of you and he is violent. No. They are very controlled and very nice and can be very sweet when they are in the consultation room. But then they will say from time to time, or when time comes, the fit comes, the anger comes, the violence comes, and the violence is hitting, striking, and killing. The desire is, it's not the desire only to kill, they kill. They have to complete the action of violence. Hayosiamos, <coughs> who is a similar remedy, has the desire to kill. It's very interesting because I could not understand desire to kill and kill and uh, what, the, what is the difference? There is a difference where the Hayosiamos will tell you, I, I have the desire to kill constantly, to kill, whom to kill? Anybody, everybody. <laughs> but they never, well, not never, you never know, <laughs> because, uh, uh, but they do not uh, go ahead and detonate their anger by doing some very violent thing. Well, Stramonium will, will really, will take a knife and will just charge and hit and, uh, and, and, and then you see the aggression and then they hit children, they hit the mothers, the fathers, they will uh, uh, attack their tremendously uh, uh, aggressive and violent in their feet of anger. Children, children usually that develop stramonium symptoms have been terrified by parents. <coughs> Elements from fright. <coughs> People who got a fright will develop symptoms of stramonium and fear of animals fear of animals, especially dogs, especially dogs. The dog, the idea of a dog is so painful to them, so, so frightening. It is like projecting 
their violence into the violence with which a dog can attack you and become so terrifying. Eh? The dark element, the darkness is connected also with closed places. Closed and dark, terrible. Going through tunnels, going through places which are dark and closed and enclosed, forget it. They will go into panic attacks. The remedy also that uh, was uh, given in old times when we had ra ra rabies, rabies, and the fear of the water. Eh? In such cases, a tremendous fear of coming near the water. How is that? Why is that? I don't know, in f physiological wise, but definitely there is a great fear, a great fear of water. So we have to understand uh, Stramonium as this subconscious darkness which is there with the violence, which comes out and expressing itself in fits, and then becomes very sweet. I'm sweet. The interesting that this violent remedy, so violent that it can kill they themselves are afraid of being endured. Either the same person, he may have both the violence and the fear, or they may have only the fear of being endured, and there is no violence. Fear of being endured to the extent, to the extent that if the, the woman says, I am afraid to shake hands, when you see such cases, and I have some on video, you will see the child is sitting there, he's so sweet, so calm, answering the questions and all that. <coughs> and you say yes. You know, the mother says, he rushes and describes the violence, the boy looks like an angel. Yeah. It's, you, you do not perceive it. You don't perceive the violence in front of you. This is what I say. We describe it like this, and uh, sometimes is, is this a case of uh, Stramonium? Is not possible? No, no, it's possible because Stramonium comes in fits. Doesn't also it's very strong, and it has to be compared again with uh, Mercury. But uh, this Stramonium, stammering in much more violent, much more violent than the Causticum or the Mercury. Uh, stammering. It is aggressive, aggressive stammering. You see the grimaces, eh? I mean, you feel. <laughs> see, children are sleeping. They are very nice. The whole day, no problem. They are sleeping. And suddenly in the night, they will wake up with a terrifying, a terri really terrifying nightmare. And they are waking up screaming and looking in, a, in terror. And the mother goes and says, what is your problem? What is your problem? What is Nothing happens. <laughs> And the, the, the terror is there, and the mother, almost every night, almost every night, they will go into that terror. And of course, many of these children, they will do what? They will leave the bed and go and sleep with the mother the rest of the night. The terror is so much that they need to feel the contact as soon as they are in contact with the mother, then they go back to sleep. But these nightmares, this kind of nightmares, which are a precursor of, of, of epileptic fits, of convulsions, etc., if they are staying, they are coming many times out of the vaccination, 
and they are treated very well uh, in the beginning stages with Ramonium. I uh, recognized in my, in my grandchild, she had a frightening experience, terrifying experience, and then she developed those nightmares, ex uh, uh, terrible nightmares and fear of dark. But she was never violent. Yeah. When she was conscious, she was never violent. Yeah. And did you uh, recognize this also, that they don't have to be violent? Yes, no. But no. those terrifying These nightmares. These children seldom are violent in their daily life. The violence comes with the fears when they arise on the sub from the subconscious level. You know, you, you, enter, you enter the sleep, eh? you enter the sleep in order to relax. What do you do? You take away the logical mind. The logical mind <laughs> is finished, then the subconscious takes over. Once the sub subconscious takes over, then there are, there, I mean, cases of nightmares for, for years, 20 years, especially after incest, you know. The, 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 the child uh, does not know what's going on, eh? and then finds out, and, and that terror uh, comes. And the nights become, become really nightmares. When you describe the child waking up at night, having yes. nightmares, the next day when you ask the child what... They don't remember. They don't remember. No, they don't remember. Thank you. They don't remember. But you have to have the child waking up in terror, real terror, because there are a lot of other remedies that have nightmares. Real terror and shout, and they cannot wake up. And they, they, they see something. They, they, you are sure they see something there because they are so much engrossed in that. What do they see? Then it is a uh, stramonium. And then uh, 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 the woman, uh, I mean, uh, they, they, they will shout. Actually, the idea is that. Uh, the logical mind takes over, it goes away, and the subconscious takes over. Whether it is in sleep or in waking state, it's the same idea. Alcohol takes the logical mind away, and the subconscious takes over. And uh, of course, uh, we have to think, the, the, the idea is when the subconscious takes over, and this subconscious is violent, then the idea of ceremonium comes, <coughs> darkness and violence.